Hello, uh, welcome to 2021 and welcome to uh, one of our first Thursday morning conversations for the year. And we're delighted to have today uh, Jean-Marc Nasser, who is the head of space systems within Airbus Defence and Space. So Jean-Marc, firstly, Happy New Year and uh, welcome to our Thursday morning conversation. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you. Good morning to you as well and to everyone else. Uh, happy to be to be with you in, just in these first days of 2021. Before we talk about some satellite stuff, tell me about, um, you know, did you have a, a nice Christmas holiday period and, uh, you know, what, what you got up to, what you got up to at home? Look, uh, nothing, nobody can say it's a normal time at the moment. So, yes, I could uh, go back home and uh, with my kids, but uh, kind of separated because some of them were, uh, were hit by COVID and had to stay home. Okay. Uh, fortunately, nobody is, uh, is really sick and everybody has recovered, but... Uh, it's not a normal time, and I think normal times are behind us, and uh, probably nothing nothing will be the same in the future. But I had a relaxing holidays, whatever we could do. Yes. How many kids? How many kids do you have? Three, three grown-up kids that are that were are in London, in in Brussels, and in Paris, and they are all uh, struggling with uh, with this uh, situation in the different places where they are, uh, with the difficulty to harmonize in Europe. The, Pandemic, uh, pandemic uh, uh, situation, and uh, there is no harmonized European response to this. So it makes uh, it makes Europe a difficult continent as, at present for what what regards pandemic. But okay, I think we, we manage, and uh, we are all optimistic about the future. Okay, well, one of these one of the fun things we do about the, these Thursday morning conversations is we get to know what people like yourself, what movies, what dramas they're watching, what music they have enjoyed listening to during lockdown and things like that. So we've had some very uh, interesting recommendations from a number of uh, um, senior executives throughout the industry. So if I could, uh, you know, um, are there any sort of particular movies or dramas that you've really enjoyed watching and? Uh, anything you would recommend yeah. to others in the industry that I, I, as an engineer I, you would not be surprised I, I have always been a science fiction fan from the <laughs> you're not the first to days. say that okay. <laughs> yes and uh, you know what what i did uh, is look back into uh, on my on my bookshelf what i had from the past and and actually there are many many books that have been written that uh, are predicting what's happening today okay. and uh, it's interesting to to look back uh, and to uh, to look at movies like uh, contagion the one that has been uh, done five years ago, where we see masks, we see those kind of things. So it's um, it's interesting to see uh, that we uh, science fiction is sometimes very close to us. So I'm yeah. still reading science fiction. I'm trying to see what will uh, our world look like in uh, 15 to 20 years from now or 50 years. Difficult to predict, uh, and uh, it's uh, the, the situation is that we 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 very very often forget uh, uh, things that are known. And uh, and we rewrite the story, and we say, oh, we we knew it, we we knew it would, would go that way, and uh, that's that's interesting. I'm still very, I'm still a fan of science fiction. Uh, I started with Arthur Clarke back in back when when I was a kid. I still read those books, and I I love them. I think yeah. the the way it is written uh, is is really is really uh, is really nice. I also look back into some stories that uh, that were interested interesting. The one wrote by Bill Gates in 2006, if my memory serves me right, when he said that the thing that will stop our uh, civilization will be will, won't be nukes, it won't be wars, it will be a virus. And uh, look like this guy was a, a visionary at this time. So it's a, it's a, I like to look into those kind of things. So what would you say your favorite sort of science science fiction movie or or, or drama is? If there's one that you had to pick, what, what recommend to the industry that are watching this? Well, I think this, this is uh, very personal. I, I love a lot of, lot of movies. I really like them. I think uh, I, I think uh, um, one that has uh, has been one of my of my childhood is definitely uh, Star Wars. That I, I, I really at this time it's it's a tw thirty year story. So it's uh, and I think it, it went well. I think uh, the Lord of the Rings is definitely something I read when I was young, and uh, that's probably the only movie that I saw. And when I saw those images, they were exactly like my I was thinking that they should be. So, so and, and I really probably my preferred movie is probably Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, they're, they're incredible movies. I remember. It seems hard to imagine now, but I mean, it wasn't the first movie almost about four hours long or something. Yeah, yeah. and really. you don't you don't feel your seat. 
Yeah. And, you know, it's like, wow, I, I struggle to get through sort of an hour and a half nowadays. Yeah. But, so to actually sit down and watch something four hours, they were amazing. They were amazing movies that, I, I, you know, when they came. And these out. are movies where you can escape from your um, daily life and uh, you know, kind of dream uh, about uh, another another world. And uh, and that's really something uh, which which we need at the moment, I think. Okay. Well, we always like to talk a little bit about music as well. We've had we've had some, uh, you know, a wide range of tastes. Uh, uh, do you have any favorite bands, types of music that you like to listen to? Mm -hmm. I, I like I like music, especially uh, blues and and rock music um, from from the eighties, seventies. No specific uh, singer in in in, in mind, but. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a good fan of country music from the US. You know, I okay. like it very much. Yeah, uh, you know it's. Uh, uh, I can't, I'm trying to remember uh, Johnny Cash, for example, is is really someone you know um, I really I, I really like those kind of things. I'm also a guitar player, so I'm, I'm also playing guitar. On my, 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 I'm also playing piano, which is uh, oh, something wow. uh, help me uh, getting out of uh, daily uh, technical issues and commercials. <laughs> We've had one or two actually say you know playing playing instruments on it. Do you have a, a like a a favorite song that you like to sort of play on the guitar or piano the one of your well, go definitely boogie uh, guitar boogie for example it's something mm -hmm. i play i play a lot uh, you know ray charles music on 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 guitar i like really much yeah yeah i'm, I'm very much a fan of ray charles okay johnny cash ray charles was kind of guys yes and do you have a in terms of a concert or a gig that you went to um that you look back on i think you know that that was just uh i know we, we were talking to uh, jean-yves legal and he I, I didn't know that he was a massive rolling stones fan absolutely <laughs> huge huge rolling stones fan which i even though i've known him many years so i'm just sort of wondering you know if you had a particular concert gig that you look back on and think wow that was i've, I've not uh, attended concert in the, in the uh, rock concert i'm not too much a, a fan of uh, crowds in, in, in the big, i'm not that, that kind of guy i really like to listen to music by myself and in a, in a quiet place i'm i'm absolutely hate crowds and and being someone with people so i'm not uh, doing those kind of things <laughs> fair enough i mean let's um i mean let's talk a little bit about um some of the work stuff and life under lockdown i mean you know i mean this thing hit just under a year ago now um mm. how as a ceo of a major european satellite company how has it sort of been for you on a on a personal level having to to manage a company in 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 unprecedented um, circumstances like this, it's a, it's a, When I look back uh, in the last uh, ten months, I remember very much uh, being in Washington for the Satellite Week in in end of February in 2020, and uh, hearing about this thing in China and saying, "Okay, this is far away. We'll see what happens." Uh, I, I recruited my head of um, space US at this time, a lady, uh, Deborah Factor, who is now heading. Uh, our U.S. operation, and then I left Washington and uh, arrived in Europe, and the lockdown started uh, immediately after that, and uh, that was a incredible experience in terms of uh, inventing what to do because from one day to another, everybody's at home. You can't go to work. There is no process in place. You, you just can't do anything. And in in France, you can't do anything on the workplace without the agreement of union. So you have to agree. On this, but it, neither the unions nor us had a, had a clue, clue about what to do, and you are there, and you have to, and you have to guarantee the security of your of your employees, and you have to guarantee everything at the same time, and you don't know what's happening. So yeah. it, the first uh, the first uh, two three weeks where again, I, I was at home, um, I, I was going to work because I was authorized to go to work. I was alone in the building, trying to talk to the people and see where they are and what they were feeling. Uh, the first thing we had is was to invent. Uh, hydroalcoholic gel that could fit into the clean rooms because we discovered the antivirus hydroalcoholic gels were not allowed into clean rooms for satellites. So we yeah. had to reinvent a new one. So yeah. we started to do that. Uh, we defined the processes uh, with, with the employees uh, and we had to do it across Europe because Airbus is very much a, a German, French, Spanish, UK company. So, and uh, as it is today, none of those countries have shared processes. It's all different. We had to adapt to the local regulations also follow the regulations of Airbus. So we had to invent a new way of working just in four weeks. And that was uh, at the same time scary because you, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know yeah. how long it will, it will last, uh, but also very exciting because you, you you have to define new ways of doing it. Exactly if you, if you were landing in a new planet and you have to 
to, to, to make your, your way in. And, uh, and I think uh, looking back now, uh, what we have done, uh, probably the, the safest place on earth is probably the clean room of Airbus for, for COVID. It was the case before because people were, were wearing masks before in the clean rooms. Yes, yeah. They are still. And, uh, and what we have invented now is, I think, can resist to any pandemic. So we have learned a lot out of it. Um, the first lockdown, March, April, was kind of, you know, first thing in my life like this. When it's a new thing, you just, uh, you know, you're, it's interesting, exciting, see what's going to happen. You don't know. The second lockdown in October was really not uh, nice because uh, you know what it is. You don't know how, how, long, how long it will last. And here we are in January 21. And honestly, uh, the European situation is not stable at all, uh, COVID-wise. And uh, what's going to happen is really, uh, is really not clear. But we have the processes. We have the way of working. Our guys are trained and uh, we can still produce and develop. So I think we have learned a lot out of it. Yeah. I mean, just to go back to that, was it a really, I mean, you talked about being at the satellite show in Washington and then, and then all of a sudden you, you, you flew back and was it almost like an overnight thing? You suddenly realize, oh my God, this is just yeah. the whole, uh, uh, everything is going to change from this, yes. this point on this. Um, I, I remember my, my kids were abroad in different trips. I, I, I told them, go back home. It's time to go back home. You, you know what will happen? You might, be, you might be blocked where you are. So don't stay there. Come back. And it's like a, not a war situation, but yes, a bit like that. It's a, it's a crisis where you don't know how long, it, how long it will last. You don't know how bad it will be. And you just have to behave. The first thing is thinking about, about your people, your own people, your loved, loved one, family, friends. Then you, you, you have to manage your, your, your business, your employees. And all this is a, is a, is a real learning curve, I think. And, and, and uh, well, I think we are prepared now for those kind of things, uh, although we don't want this to continue, but it's... Uh, it's something very different. You don't think long term. You know, my 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 real per perception in March and April was uh, you wake up in the morning, and you do what has to be done in the morning. I was not knowing what's going to happen in the afternoon, not really. No. Talk to my boss, the head of defense and space. Talk to Guillaume Fauré, the head of Airbus. He was lost like us. You know, all were lost. You know, in the, the Airbus Airbus commercial aircraft, uh, they lost uh, out of a sudden forty percent of the turnover. You know, the airlines are, are stuck on the ground. No planes are not flying. This has never happened in the past, so it's a it's a it's a very short term view. Just do what you have to do the next day, and we started to look ahead the next week in May June, and then the next month in July August, okay. and now we we hope to to look at, at at next year and see what happens. And and in terms of like building satellites, because I mean, in, as we all know, we, this is a tremendously global industry. It covers parts of the world that, that no other technologies cover. Um, what do you sort of see as been some like the unique challenges sort of facing you and an and Airbus to try and keep the supply chain up and running and, and keep the cycle of business running? Yeah, that that was definitely so on, on the satellite business. Uh, interestingly, uh, I don't know when I was in March, I was thinking, OK, what's what will happen to this business now? Uh, and w will the customer walk away and, you know, divert their views towards something else? It didn't happen like that. On the contrary, uh, the customers were at our side since the beginning, and the need for space has never been higher than now. So it's uh, the pandemic has accelerated the view that space is probably a, a way to cover some of the risk linked to the pandemic. So on that side, it, it, it went it went uh, it went quite well. And uh, and yes, you're right. The supply chain has been a concern because as we are scattered in the, the rest of the world, and and assembling one satellite in Airbus a clean room means a lot of sub subcontractors traveling to us with their equipment to fix it on satellite and to make it make it work. This was not possible any longer. Some small suppliers started to really have difficulties, and we have set up a, a watchtower to help them out because some of them have key te technologies. Big companies, you know, they they, they shout and they are, they get help. We shout we we shout in Airbus and we get help in the in the in the stimulus plans that have been done in Europe. But when you're a small company, a very small company, an SME, say 50, 100 people, yeah. you don't shout. You're afraid of saying that you're going bad and then things can be worse. So my, my, the key concern was, and not only for Airbus, we did that uh, with the whole industry, with Thales, Alenia Space, OHB, and the others in Europe, monitoring our suppliers, making sure they are surviving this and helping them out. Hmm. Were you sort of surprised how, I mean, I mean, you, you sort of said, and, and you said last week on a, on a press conference as well, that you were thinking that maybe companies would, would sort of push back from um, 
satellite orders due to this environment. Uh, were you surprised at almost how resilient the industry has been? Was that sort of a a nice surprise? Were you were you fearing the worst at one stage? I mean, I'm just sort of curious. Not really, because uh, first of all, uh, a, a good part of our activity is serving the governments, mm -hmm. and the governments need space. It's not. A, it's a question of sovereignty and security of of, of our country. So this is not uh, going to be uh, stopping. It's too, it's too important. So uh, from the beginning, when we had the lockdown, the first thing that happened in March is that we were called by our defense customers, the military customers around the world, saying, "Keep delivering. We this cannot stop." And it's, uh, you are you are maintaining in orbit satellites that are absolutely key for us, so it can it cannot stop. So we got the government on our side on those government business uh, absolutely from the beginning. So I was not afraid of that. I, I got a bit afraid of um, the commercial telecom sector because these are private players, and I was thinking to myself, look, uh, those guys are selling uh, telecom services to uh, companies and to uh, and to B two C business, and uh, if this is stopping, what will happen to them? They have very long business cases with heavy capex uh, satellites, and then they, they need to get back on their investment. And what will happen if they don't? Uh, but actually, uh, now almost a year after this uh, has started, uh, on the contrary, I see a, a great resilience of those uh, of those needs. So I'm very pleased about that. And also, I, I must admit, when I compare uh, pure private business, that we got a lot of help from our governments. Uh, you know, our governmental customers. ESA, European Commission, uh, nations, France, Germany, UK, they are paying us uh, in no time. Uh, and they, are, they, they understood that we, we need to, have, uh, to be paid. So they don't give us gifts and we, we deliver things. But normally we have 60 days payments and, and we've asked them to accelerate that and they have done it. So I'm very grateful to them. They have really helped. Fantastic. And I know that at that press conference last week, you spoke of an optimism for the year ahead as well. I know that at the start of the year, particularly in Europe, the, I mean, the COVID situation is it's still pretty pretty grim, in all honesty. And it, it may take until, the I guess, the spring-summer vaccine rollout before, mm -hmm. before hopefully things get better. Um, in terms of um, what you're seeing for, from the industry, I know you signed that big OneSat deal with, with uh, Intelsat as well. Mm -hmm. What do you if we look at the commercial market in particular, how do you see the, the you know, the commercial opportunities in, in terms of RFPs and uh, potential satellite orders for Airbus this year? Look, uh, first, if I, if I look back to our plan uh, for 2020 done in 19, so before the pandemic, this plan has realized as, as planned and even beyond what we hope. So, and the pandemic was there. So if I look at uh, what has happened, it gives me hope because in a very in 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 a, in a year of uncertainty and 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 scare for our, and and for our customers, it worked. So it, this gives, gives me optimism for the future because now we know what it is. We know what is a pandemic, and and uh, and yes, so this is not this this is called COVID nineteen. There will be COVID twenty one. There will be there will be others, and it's a uh, you know, this is our world is like this. So so I think uh, the need of the need for space has uh, is there. And uh, I'm confident that uh, we not only it will continue as planned, but it will accelerate. And uh, yesterday in the in the space uh, space conference in, in Brussels, uh, which was a virtual one, I was there physically, but we were only 15 people around these uh, these screens. You could you could hear the, the speech of uh, Commissioner Breton uh, of the European Commission, very very strongly on space for navigation, for for the climate change, for security and sovereignty. All those decisions have been taken and have been reinforced with the pandemic. So, on the contrary, I think uh, uh, this, this pandemic has, has shown that uh, our citizens, our, our societies, uh, can't just uh, can't just uh, avoid to develop space faster than before because space is the only way to keep things connected. Sp space is the only way to see things globally in the planet. There, there, is, there is no only way. Space is the only way to position properly things on the planet. Navigation. And you and I are using space 20 times a day on our smartphone without knowing it. And uh, I think this pandemic has created this awareness. I want to share with you a, a, a kind of a, a strange story. My, my, my daughter is 33 years old. She's working in M&A company in the in, in m and in the UK. And yeah. we were discussing at Christmas about that. And I was explaining what we have been doing on space. And she said to me, but well, you're lucky that people are paying you to do what you do. It's, it's nice. It's space is, is, is nice, but they pay you for that. You know, you're lucky. And I said to her, look, but it's, it's important. And she, was, she had no clue, really. It's my fault because she's grown up. <laughs> she's, but she was not aware, really, that she, she's using space 20 times a day. And I said to myself, we've made a mistake. I think 
we are working between us. We all know what is space, but we don't explain. And I think uh, our our populations, our, our societies need to know. They need to know how, is, how important it is. Weather forecast, climate change, security, navigation, nothing of this can be done without space. And this is what we're doing. It's very true, because when I tell people I'm a, a satellite or a space mm -hmm. editor stroke journalist, I get all kinds of like quizzical glances. Yeah. Half, <laughs> think, half the people think I just write about stars. And yeah, exactly. It, yeah, and that's the problem of Star Wars. You know, it's, it's yeah. okay. It's a, uh, okay, you do, you do stars, you do, you do, you do space. And, uh, and it's, it's our fault. I think we are too much engineers. We are too much involved in what we do. And we don't take enough time to explain. And I think it's, uh, it's our job is now to explain what's, why it's important. And just uh, we'll end. We always try to end on a on a fun question. So mm. I know you mentioned we we just talked about sort of Star Wars there. So let me ask you uh, your favorite Star Wars movie and why you pick it as your favorite one. <laughs> you will not like it probably. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, the one that made made, made me dream is, is the first one. Well, the, the the first one that was done in in in, in the in in the eighty early early eighties. Yeah, because the technology was not there. You know, those flying cars, this young, this, this young man becoming, a, you know, this was the this this is still for me. Maybe because maybe because I'm 60 years old this year, and and I'm a, a, I see that from from my from my, from my um, earlier age. But uh, it's really the one I prefer, and I'm still looking at. I'm still watching this movie still now, and I still like it. I I, I, I said that was a final question. I'm going to sneak in one more. Have you been watching The Mandalorian at all? Do you have Disney Plus watching The Mandalorian? The last one. You mean the last one? No, the series, the the uh, the Star Wars spin-off series, Mandalorian, which is on. No, I don't see it yet. No, not yet. I, yeah, I, I'm sort of curious. I mean, I know if it, I haven't watched it myself, but I know a few people that have. But uh, mm -hmm. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that if you if you get around to watching it. Uh, well, John Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to to talk to you today. Um, on behalf of Via Satellite, I mean, Airbus is, uh, you know. It, a European company, but it's really a, a fantastic global company within our, our, our sector. Does a, a you know a phenomenal amount of great work, enabling business plans and enabling dreamers to make the most of space-based exactly. communication. Um, I just want to wish you, um, your colleagues, your family, your loved ones, your friends, all the best for for 2021. You know, we think you do a marvelous job for the industry and. Uh, uh, we hope to obviously see you soon, but we also hope that you can have a very successful 2021. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. And uh, happy new year to you also and to, to, to your loved ones. And uh, let's hope for the best for all of us for 2021. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.